Okay, so way back in the day, I used to play a little big game called Little Big Planet. It was originally released on the PS3, but I had the version for the PSP. Sag boy, no! Stay still. <laughs> Do you like my little ornament? <laughs> He's just chilling, just don't mind him. He's the star of the show. <laughs> the PSP version of Little Big Planet was its own original game with a completely original story mode. Whole new engine. It was like different to the original. It's a the new game. <laughs> now when I was a kid, I had one of these bad boys. A PSP Go. Now I have always been obsessed with creating games and levels and you know, all that good stuff. I was a Pokemon ROM hacking child, allegedly. <laughs> Swampert tools raised me, what can I say? I have actually been yearning for a chance to replay it and just revisit all of those fond memories I made when I initially played that game and then played it again another like 40 times throughout the duration of my childhood. <laughs> so sit back and relax and let us explore the weird and wacky world of Little Big Planet for the PSP. The first level in this little big game is simply the introduction. This is commonplace in any LBP title. It just introduces you to the general vibe as well as showing off some credits before you start the actual story. The first world is Down Under, based in Australia. There is no New Zealand on this map, I checked. This is the first level walkabout where we learn how to move around and jump. We also get to learn about some of the core level features. These here are score bubbles and they are an optional collectible to add to your final score but they are absolutely everywhere so it's unlikely you won't run into them. They're a useful way to know which way to go as well just in case you I don't know get lost. There's also a bigger kind of score bubble known as a prize bubble and they contain prizes. This could either be some clothes, a sticker which you can place anywhere in the world or something for the level creator. Oh hell yeah we got some drip. A true crocodile dundee. The main usage for stickers is via the form of these sticker switches. If you have obtained the required sticker, then you can place it and unlock the next part of the level. Oh god damn it, I'm stuck. Not to worry though, I can explode and then return to my most previous checkpoint. Perfect. At the end of the level, we have a scoreboard which tallies our score, and in 2011, it would connect online and compare your scores to other people. The next level is Gift of the Grab. It's where we learn how to grab stuff. We also get to ride a sheep. Yippee! Guys, this koala asked me to hold on to its booty. Don't know how I feel about that. Is this what people think when they imagine Australia? Just floating boomerangs the size of a skyscraper? In the final level, we have to scale a mountain to reach the mystic, a creator curator, which is basically the person who created this world that we're exploring. Each world has one. I love the jetpack, one of my all time favorite Little Big Planet upgrades. Oh, look, here's the mystic. He's a very distinguished gentlemen. Now this level is more of an exposition cutscene style level. It's where we learn the overarching plot of the game. There's a huge carnival that's about to take place but all of the creator curators haven't RSVP'd so it's our job to go around and see what's up. Alright. So next up is the Orient. This here is Emperor Sario. There's a nasty dragon on the loose so we're asked to deal with it. Starting with repairs to the Great Wall. Like the Great Wall of China? <laughs> I'm doing a pretty good job guys. What do you think? Oh shoot! It's the dragon! Or more like shoot the dragon. Literally has a target in her mouth. Stop! I will lay waste to this land unless my son is returned to me! He's an egg. <laughs> oh god. Okay. Okay, so the emperor took some random egg and it turns out it just belongs to, I don't know, the dragon? Well now we have to storm the palace. God damn it. Oh, Jesus Christ. Bro, give me a break. Okay, so we have to find the password to open the safe containing this heavily guarded locked up egg. Do you think we could just get it first go? Okay, not a chance. We've actually got to go and solve the puzzles, I understand. So there's one for each key. The panda one is pretty easy, just move some pandas around and push a big red button. Jetpack one is hard. The course is so tight and there are these little electric obstacles which move really fast. Okay, so I just guessed the rest and got the combination right, Alimeo. I went back anyways just to see what the last two puzzles were and there's this one where you gotta pull some floaty blocks out of the way and then another target shooting minigame. 
finally the dragon is reunited with her uh, son. And I almost got stuck, but I'm fine because I'm actually really, really good at this game. Anyways, the dragon is offered to take us to the next world, so off to the bazaar we go. First level is Cheeky Monkey. Oh, it's a bit of a thief, I see. The platforming is definitely a step up than the previous two worlds, and I'm surprisingly doing very well. <gasps> oh my god, Cheeky Monkey? More like Cheeky Bitch. Yeah, you better run. Oh, Thanos snapped, I see. Give it up, Slack Boy? Oh. Right, I'm tracking this bastard down. It's a bad day to fuck with me. We sneak into the thieves' den via pizza delivery. Delivery driver gets Thanos snapped right after we get in. Damn, rip. Oh, whoops. I guess I've never actually managed this before, but I slid the key into the area that it activates the actual den part of the thieves' den, but I ran out of the trigger area just in time. Now I'm trapped. Good thing we have the reset explodey button. The Thieves' Den is actually really, really fun. It's always been one of my favorite levels. The platforming is really interesting and not too easy. Ouchies. Got burned. Now we're back where we started, except we can progress this time. We have to hold on to the lamp without getting burned. If we succeed, then the Monkey King will give it to us. Monkey Thief Code decrees that I must honor the bet. I am a reformed simian. Here, take the lamp. I'm sad for this character arc. Living for it, even. And so the lamp was the genie, the creator curator of the bazaar. How handy is that? Wait, so hold up. The genie's problem is just that he was kidnapped by a monkey. Okay. In the next level, Rugs and Kisses, the genie teaches us how to use the magic flying carpet, which is not easy. In fact, it's super duper fucking hard. Yo, when I played this level as a kid, it gave me so much trouble that I actually had to time out and like like, not play the game for a couple of months. Like, come on now, look at this. You having a laugh, little big planet for the PSP? It's fine, I'm a fully grown adult now. My dexterity knows no bounds. It only took me like 20 attempts. Thank God this game has infinite lives and I don't have to listen to after finishing that up, we are transported to Golden Sands. I am very excited. It has been frozen over where I live for like a couple of weeks now and I haven't seen the sky in a month, so I am due for a desert vacation. Fucking sign me up. We start our vacation off by getting the new drip, of course. Okay, so this is the one and only Prince Funibus. He's building the funnest fun park. <laughs> I find this typo hilarious because with the one N, Funnest means causing evil or death. Fatal. Disastrous. The jokes write themselves in Little Big Planet. So he's lost a camel, and now it's our job to go and find it, of course. No matter how dangerous of a task. Oh man, I can't get the prize bubble. God damn it. Oh, I found the camel. Now what? Oh, we're going racing? All right, make way for Slack Boy. In the next level, we have to aid the shipment of some important goods. I I totally misread the assignment and thought that the cargo was being held in this little compartment underneath the elevator thing, but it wasn't. When I tried to get them back out, I got stuck. Lord help me. I better get free entry into this torture park or whatever it is we're making again. Everything on board? All right, let's go. Oh, bit choppy today. Alas, we were rewarded for our efforts. Now we get to enjoy the fun park as a beta tester. <laughs> better than nothing. This place this actually rocks. It's a nice shift from the regular gameplay. Oh no, okay, I'm not smart enough to navigate this. Oh, thank god. Time for the roller coaster. Yo, this rocks. Oh my god, what a thrill ride. So now that we've helped the prince out, it's time for Alpine Rush and, oh, whoops, we've just gone and crashed into this poor man's house. Oh, and all of his kids are missing, so I love that for him. I actually really liked discovering that you could decapitate the snowman for for a nifty prize bubble. Caution, angry cows. Okay, we found the first kid who was up at the top of another mountain. Now we gotta go down the other side and go find child number two. Two of three, that is. These skiers need to watch it, goodness. I like the toboggan, it's a fun little vehicle and cutting through the snow is really satisfying. After a short ride on the hot air balloon, we find the second child
child and embark on the next leg of our journey. You get it? Embark. Bark. We have to light the fire with a sticker. Very normal LBP things. Okay, here's the final kid. And oh, he's snowed in. In a mountain, that is. Hold on. Oh, how lovely. A family reunion. Okay, off to the next place. This is Tinseltown. And the director, who is the creator curator of this world, needs us to star in his next blockbuster film. Okay, I don't mind being a movie star. Whatever you say, boss. Oh, God. I thought these were just props. This alien man, I swear to God. This started off fun, but now it's kind of stressing me out. Oh, yes, yes. Clap for me. Make sure we get some prize bubbles. Okay, time to go to... Uh, uh, to space, I guess. I like how all of the widgets are visible. It really adds to the vibe that you're actually on a movie set. This maze is the end of me, honestly. If it has one hater, it's me. If it has no haters, I'm dead. Time for a pseudo boss fight. We have to throw bombs at this brain and I'm not doing too great. Our final mission or scene is to infiltrate this evil base. We land via parachute and make our way to the lasers where we have to activate some switches. I'm fairly certain that this was another part that tripped me up as a kid. I just could not do it. It's fine though. I'm an adult now, remember? Took me like 50 attempts. <laughs> this part is actually really, really fun. I really feel like a secret agent now. Run Slack boy, run! Jeez, these are getting pretty fast. Oh hell yeah. We get the bubbles, we get the car, and we get the girl. It is now time for my award ceremony where everyone talks about how amazing I am. Oh, well, I guess she wants to make it all about her. Don't worry, I'm on my way. Okay, so this is the true final boss of the game. The evil gorilla. I think his name is actually wrong. We have to hang on to his teeth and rip them out of his mouth to defeat him. I mean, I get he's a bad guy, but this is kind of brutal, no? Oh my god, he just launched her. Oh, it's okay, here she is. Oh my god, wait, she got us a prenup? Wait, we're getting married? What? Alas, it is time, finally, for the carnival of creators, and I guess my honeymoon as well. This is the final world, but the levels are so much more relaxed than everything else in the game. We basically have to go back and do some final checks before the big parade. You know, make sure everyone's floats are in tip-top shape. Ah, nothing like a bit of fracking in my favorite little big planet game. As we help everyone out, they reward us in decorations for our own float. Very kind of them. It was really nice to actually reunite with the characters we hadn't seen for a long time and actually just see what they've been up to. Finally, after all of that busy work and the little big adventure of a lifetime, we arrive at the procession. This is just an auto scroller for the credit sequence, but it was actually really, really cool and felt like a really fitting end for the final level. I got to be a little silly goofy with the expressions too. I decided to check out my moon after playing the story. This is the area where you can create your own levels and oh my god, there were so many tutorials to get through, but I was finally creating my own level and it's a lot more limiting than I remembered, but also also, compared to the PS3 games, it's a bit of a struggle to create with the PSP tools. I still made something a little cute and in classic novice level creator fashion. It's unbeatable. I honestly, I tried so hard. I, it's unbeatable. I made a terrible level. I made sure to call it Swagtopia in honor of my sister's Animal Crossing Island, Swagland. And now with that done, that's actually all I have to say about Little Big Planet for the PSP. I had a real blast revisiting this game. It was a huge nostalgia bomb for me considering I hadn't played it since I was a child. If you can get your hands on this game, I really highly recommend it. Or even if you can find the PS3 versions, definitely check them out. As far as platformers go, the series is very high on like my top 10. So yeah, it's good. You should play it. Now, I know that there's a new Sackboy game, which is a platformer, but not necessarily Little Big Planet. I am tempted to play it because you can get it on Steam. So if you want to see a video, on that then let me know otherwise have a lovely little big day be sure to subscribe if you haven't already because it really helps the channel and i'll love you forever and ever um and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye